The One Piece live action adaptation is here. <gasps> Finally! This is, I'd argue, been one of the most, if not the most hyped live action, even more hyped than 2018 Bleach live action, even more hyped than 2019 Alita Battle Angel live action, 2017 Death Note live <laughs> Light Turner. Come on. Hell no. A big up to the foe though. Of course, the ongoing Kingdom live action films over in Japan that started in 2019, and the recent Saint Seiya Knights of the Zodiac movie, which came out this year. Now, you good people, all right, my fellow homo sapiens, want an honest take, and I'm gonna tell you my honest take of the One Piece live action that I've watched so far, which so far is episodes one through five. I have not watched the entire thing, but you know how it is. People need their fix. They need their, <laughs> they need their good stuff ASAP. So, I'm gonna compromise here. Cause in the future, I have a more robust video plan for live action, but I'm gonna give you my honest take with relatively no spoilers. Like very, very, very spoiler light. The heavy spoilers will come when I do that more robust video after it's all said and done. Honestly, I did try to watch all eight episodes in a single night, all eight of them. But that, that, ooh, that is a Herculean task, make no mistake, which by the way, you made absolutely zero mistakes if you did watch my live stream reaction to the Netflix live action over on my Patreon. Of course, in the future, edited and uploaded to the appropriate places, you know where to go. All links in the description box down below. Make sure you have eight hours to spare because that's how long that stream was for just five episodes of One Piece live action, eight hours. What's wrong with you? So in a general sense with very, very, very light spoilers, k Lightning, what do you think about the One Piece live action? Speak as you might to a young child or a golden retriever. First, the good. I'm begging you. I am begging you. You will not, you will not regret this. Turn on captions. <laughs> Yo. The captions were absolutely Hilarious. I know it means I'm slow and old to have captions on, but I promise you, you will not regret turning captions on because they do make it a little more fun. And there is no harm in having a little more fun. That's number one. But the true number one, which is number two, is the settings. The settings are great. Each arc has a main setting that the story kind of unfolds in. And then each one is pretty dense. People already know that the budget for the One Piece live action, ain't, it's ain't nothing to scoff at, it's quite robust. And as far as I can tell, the vast majority of that budget went into the creation of the settings. That's where the lion's share is, and it, it, it has absolutely paid off. And part of that density are the Easter eggs, number three. It is chock full of Easter eggs. And it's not something I was so keen on searching for while trying to just enjoy the show in of itself. Yeah, that's pretty true. But as a fan for many, many years of One Piece, there were some things that I did catch, tying back to things like I believe data books or SBSs or all those comments, stuff like that. Legend has it that Artor is going to be going through the Easter eggs of the One Piece live action. A massive video just tackling all these easter eggs so be on the lookout for that on his channel in the future but there are a chock full of easter eggs in these dense settings which is really 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 cool to see you are correct sir after that the comedy the comedy in the one piece anime manga for me i think is pretty good part of the reason why i enjoy the series so much i think it is a very funny show and the live action i think is way more on point than it is off point nice mix of genuinely funny corny at times, dark, playful, a little bit lewd, and of course that low IQ greatness. Our crew can handle anything. Who the hell is Monkey D. Luffy? So I would say that the comedy for me, it does slap for the most part. And uh, again, the captions, oh my God. <laughs> the, the captions, oh my goodness, are fun. And on a side note too, it's also pretty fun, is how they do the titles 
for each episode of One Piece, and they're all different, which surprised me. They're all different, focusing on the arc at hand for various characters and various arcs. That, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That was some really cool stuff. And what's also pretty cool too, are the way they have the animations for the wanted posters. The wanted posters, all oh, that, whoever made that choice, that was lit. Ooh. Because through the wanted poster effects, you really get a sense of self-awareness. This show, even though there are very serious moments, Without a doubt, the adventure is fun first and foremost. So some folks may not like that, but I think it's really cool, honestly. After that, what's also cool too, is the action. The action was better than I thought. Across the board, Luffy, Zoro, Nami. <laughs> Nami surprised me when it came to the action and love that she got in the earlier episodes. Nami surprised me, I'm gonna lie to you. Mihawk, oh, good lord, man. <laughs> just killing some time. Woo, me, that's what I'm gonna say. Just me, Hawk, ooh, gets unbelievable sauce, man. Mihawk fanboy is eating very good, very good in this live action without a doubt. Also, low key, low key, the curl fanboys too. The pussy foot maneuver has always been goofy. <laughs> now. But also cool at the same time. <laughs> I like it. I've always been a fan of the pussy foot maneuver. And in the live action, the pussy foot maneuver, I think, yo, the sway backs like Muhammad Ali, yeah, I dig it. I definitely, definitely dig it. And of course, what I also undeniably dig is the fact that the live action is TV 14. The drinking, the smoking, the, the nudity, it's there. And of course, blood. Oh. Blood for the blood of God. That's why I'm wearing red. That's why I'm wearing red, baby. Blood, it's there. And oh my God, off the rip, they don't skimp. They don't skimp. Uh, a certain character, of course, never escaping the allegations. <laughs> However, I was pleased to see that the blood was there and they did not miss a beat. It's almost like the complete reverse what they did for the four kids though. That's just lame. No. Wrong. After this, of course, without a doubt, the acting. The acting, I think, is good. Very solid across the board. And some characters are honestly got spot on. Inyaki's Luffy is very, very good. His IQ actually cranked up a bit more compared to his manga and counterpart, at least so far. Makenyu Zoro is very solid, and the edge is, is dialed up to a 7 out of 10 on the low end. It, the edge is, oh, it, it is strong, which I know a lot of cats do like. Emily's Nami is pretty good. Uh, a hard nut to crack compared to Luffy and Zoro. Layers to her character, which does make sense considering how she is the best ring character in the East Blue. Jacob's Usopp, fun as hell, vibing and lying on the regular. Not as cowardly, He's cowardly, but not like overemphasized on the cowardice compared to his anime manga counterpart. Though right now again, because I'm episode five, I can't really gauge Taz's Sanji just yet. Though I will say that what I got so far, the little I got, on point. There were some other characters that stuck out to me. Kuro I thought was very good. Same for Garp, Mihawk, Shanks. Low key shouts to Lucky Roo, my supposed brother, allegedly, as the chat so often reminded me of. And also low key shout outs to Colton who did the young Luffy. But, but, whoop, whoop. here I come. The stars of the acting were Jeff Ward's buggy. And I, what, what shocked me is Aiden Scott's Helmepa. I'm sorry. First of all, Jeff Ward, buggy, outstanding. <laughs> Slaying. Slaying. Man is on point. Part of me wants to say 
that Jeff is tapping into that Heath Ledger or even like a Joaquin Phoenix Joker, but that could be me trying to like force a connection uh, since those are the best iterations of clowns I've seen in entertainment. Jeff, to me, he's knocking on that door. He's trying to slide on in into the five-star circus because his clown activity is outstanding. Hands wise the thumbnail. Jeff kills in this live action. Well, doubt. And Aiden, Aiden Scott Helmepo is unironically top tier. If there was one character, and I could be off base here, but if there was one character I could compare him to, it would be Viserys from Game of Thrones. Not House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones. The older brother of Daenerys Targaryen. I am the dragon! I am the dragon! I am the dragon! I won my crown! Yo, <laughs> I swear to you, those are the vibes I genuinely got watching Aiden Scott's Helmetho. Not as cruel, but at times their cadence, how they carry themselves, temperamental, condescending, very arrogant. To me, I think that Aiden Scott Helmepo has done a pretty damn good job, especially considering how the Marines in this version of the series get a lot more love compared to the anime and manga versions. And now slides in the last point when it comes to the good. If you've ever seen any other live action adaptation of any other show, then you know that they have to alter the original content to make it fit the new medium. Whether it's a character design or some minor plots or some settings, things have to be changed from the original anime and manga. And depending on the original series' scale, they can be minor changes or a whole mess of changes. And of course, obviously, what also matters a lot is the time frame as to which you are allowed to get this all done. That's actually probably the most important thing. They only have eight episodes to tackle the entirety of the East Blue Saga, which is maddening. Now, they could argue hard now. They could have just done like one arc per season or something like that. Hell no. I don't think it would jive, not even really close, the same way as, let's say, getting to the entirety of the East Blue Saga, especially when One Piece as a series is so robust and it's so long. We are literally approaching 1,100 chapters and 1,100 episodes. You think they can afford to do eight episodes of a live action and just have it be one arc? Hell no. So I'll say overall that Steven and Matt and anybody else that was taking part in the reorganization and rearranging of certain characters' standings in the world of One Piece, the elimination of certain characters and certain plot points that would hamper down the overall pace of the live action, I thought they did actually a pretty good job. Very, very suitable for live action and, and very suitable, I think, for a lot of people that have always consistently complain about how the pace of the One Piece story is too damn slow. The live action doesn't have these issues compared to the anime and the manga. And in my opinion, some things are just done flat out better in the live action than the anime manga. For me personally, it's been the flashbacks. The, oh, wow. The way they do them is that they integrate them in real time situations that coincide with the character's past in some way, in some meaningful way. Those flashbacks, I think are really good. Really good in live action. So I can't go to again full bore because it's mostly spoiler free, but the flashbacks slap. They absolutely do. And once again, shout outs to everyone that was a part of planning out that whole reorganization of the scheme of the story to fit a live action eight episode window. Outstanding job there. However, nothing, nothing is truly, genuinely, earnestly perfect. There's always going to be that one thing or those two things or those three things, right? And so let's tackle the four things that I think were mid. Not so good in the live action so far. And the first two things are two double-edged swords. You have to give and you have to take when you give. There are character moments, certain plot points that I did want to see in the live action, but because of the restructuring process 
these plots and these characters either do not exist or are so minor they're damn irrelevant. <laughs> so even though it is what it is. This stuff, it needs to happen. Even though I think it's a net positive, undeniably, I'll be lying to say it was all peaches and cream. Stop! I would be lying if I said that because man, again, no spoilers here. I'm gonna say that for the way more robust video in the future. But yo, there were some moments I was looking forward to, hardcore, and they are now out the window, never to be seen. Where are they? Ah! Okay, that is a bullet you have to bite for a live action. That's true. Now the second double-edged sword that maybe not a lot of folks caught are also the settings. Wait a minute. But, but, but King, in the good section, yeah, yeah, hold on. Listen, Listen. the settings are absolutely dense. They are robust. The budget went there and they slap. However, it also feels like, you know what, I would not even say feel like. I'm willing to bet that they're also bound. They're also bound by their settings. Unlike in the actual One Piece anime and manga, where the setting is constantly changing, whether it's on sea or at land, even in the East Blue itself. But in the live action, what we see them do is that they go back and they reutilize settings that we saw in the past to help move the story along and for efficiency's sake. And it's also likely, it's also likely another reason why some characters got completely axed and or have much smaller roles and other characters are given the sauce with a lot of extra fries on the side. Like a Five Guys large order of fries, a big bag of fries. Because the settings that are the center of particular arcs, particular groups were done and you only have eight episodes to get everything set and done. Therefore, focus on the characters that are more compatible with the settings and then intertwine the main cast of characters with these characters way more often. Another reason why the Marines, I would argue, get so much love in the live action. The last two things that I think are on the negative side is that it is what it is. At times, the CG, mm, poor. which also at times does lead to bad sequences in fights. Again, most of the fights I thought were enjoyable, better than I expected, but sometimes the CGI, it does falter, it does give. Then it's like, oh, mm, no, that part I'm not digging, I'm not digging. I'll be very, very honest on my stance on that. And then finally, questionable stuff. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Sometimes props do weird things, uh, sometimes when it comes to pace, certain characters, like for example, I'll say it right now, Shanks, we know at some point, loses sight of Luffy. Where's Luffy? In the anime and manga, given hockey, okay, it makes no sense really. But in the live action, it makes even less sense. Like what? Wait, how? I don't know. In fights, sometimes a rando cat, like a Marine, gets thrown to the ground, like ha! Booyah! That, a, a, a very light toss and then they stay on the ground like it was judo class. Get him up, let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. Uh, oh my God, he threw me and I just- uh, Three-year-old kids can bounce back from that toss. What are you talking about? <laughs> but to wrap this all up, even though there are negative things about the live action, I would say for damn sure, the live action is a net win. I'm not done yet. Maybe episode six through eight suck. Maybe. I'm gonna see him real soon, real soon. But I'm gonna say right now, right now. This live action is one of the best live action adaptations of an anime I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot, both good and bad. I, I have seen the Full Metal Alchemist live action. Okay, that's enough. Ho, oh, that is some bad content. And I've seen the old school Roroni Kenshin film trilogy. slaps and right now the one piece live action wow that slap <laughs> it's slapping it is very very good the ratings for the most part indicate this 
outside of like Jeez. IGN clowns, absolute smooth brains, and their reasonings trash. And I will dive more into this again in a future video, going over everything I possibly can in a in a pretty long video. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming a pretty long video for live action. For the time being, this is my honest take. Episodes one through five of One Piece, in a general sense, they're cooking. If you want to cook, you should cook. See you. Bye-bye.